everyone. Welcome to FedBiz Exchange Federal Contracting Series. I'm Michelle Brown, and today we're going to talk to you about what is a freaking capability statement? Why do you need one, and how do you create one? Some of you know what it is, some of you don't, but it is one of the basics that you need to know if you want to do federal contracting. So let's get on to it. Capability statement is actually a marketing tool for you when you want to meet with or talk with federal buyers. It's one of the basic things you should have. It's like a brochure, but it's a brochure that's structured in a very specific way, and it is specifically for federal contracting. So I'm going to give you the foundation, and also I will give you a link to use our format so you don't have to create it all on your own. This is one of those things that you need to have, but it's kind of a a pain in the you-know-what to create it so we try to make these things simple for you but let's walk through what you need and make sure that you understand why it's impo important for you to have a professional document it can be one or two pages but it should be two-sided if possible okay so let's get to it so a capability statement is basically something that every business that wants to do federal contracting every I mean every business should have one the document should be very neat and simple and remember it's for marketing you want your brochure to look nice and clean so this is just like that you want it to be easy to read you want it to have headers so that they can easily find information and again this is specifically for marketing to the federal government so you know you need to realize that these guys are not going to take a lot of time to wade through information so it needs to be specific clear and organized and when I say specific there is specific information that I will walk through in this document that you must have on your capability statement and when I have people come to my training I always tell them to bring their capability statement only because I want to make sure that everyone understands what it is um, there's some information out there on maybe Google for you to learn how to do it, but it's something that you need to get done. It's one of those things that you should not put off. So let's start with number two, your SAM profile. You need to have very specific information from your SAM profile on there. For instance, you need to have your DUNS, uh, your DUNS number you would have gotten that when you set up your SAM profile. You will have your certifications on there if you're a WSB or a veteran or a hub zone uh, any or 8A, any of those that uh, pertain to your business, you should have them on there. You should have what we call your cage code and your cage code comes from SAM. So if you can't find it, log into your, your SAM account and it should be right on your profile. Cage codes are assigned to you by the federal government, so you have nothing to do with that. But it's in your SAM, pro SAM profile. Everyone has one, and everyone has a different cage code. And then your NAICS codes. List at least six. If you only have four, that's fine too, but list all of your NAICS codes. Now, remember what I talked to you about. Even if you haven't done your research and your homework, as I described in the five steps to winning federal government contracts, that's okay. You can always change it. But right now you need to get uh, a, a capability statement to present your information and introduce yourself. Then the PSC codes, again, that's just like the NAICS codes. If that's not uh, something that you're feeling solid about, when you do your research, all you need to do is come back and correct the information. It's not a big deal. You'd like to have the correct uh, NAICS codes on there, but if you meet a federal buyer and they're using different codes and you find that out, all you need to do is change it because that definitely could happen. So what are the NAICS codes? I mentioned uh, you researching in the five steps you would learn how to do your research, specifically in video four and video five. You're doing your research, you're matching up your NAICS codes and your PSC codes right here under number three. You would match your information to what they have. And if your information does, does not match what the federal buyers and the agencies that you'd like to go after, if it doesn't match, you change it, change it to 
what your federal buyers are using. So you need to understand which codes are being used and you need to check to make sure that your codes that you're using is matching your buyer codes. And if you are a WOSB or an EDWOSB, you need to make sure that you are also using the codes that are identified in the ED and WOSB uh, NAICS code document. You can't, as a WSB, just use any codes you want to if you want them to set aside for you. You can when it comes to small businesses, but you should have both. If you're a woman-owned business and you're certified, you should have both your WSB codes and EDWSB codes, and then you should also have your total small business codes. Okay, so that's number three. Number four, you need to clearly document your capabilities for your company. It needs to be very short and sweet. It's like an elevator pitch. And so, you know, one might think, how does all of this information go in a document? I'm going to show you how. And it's not going to be a four page document. It's going to be one or two pages. So you need to have an elevator pitch anyway, and that elevator pitch is going to be in a simple paragraph. And so that's number four. Number five, what are your core competencies? What are the things that you can do that make you special, that make you capable? Um, you should document those in bullet points. They should not be all over the pet place in, uh, in paragraphs. Just very brief one-liners about your capabilities, and I'll show you what I mean by that. But you could use uh, your NEICS and PSC code key descriptions if you want to. That would make it a lot easier. So if you don't have those descriptions already written out, uh, you can use your NEICS code key descriptions and also PSC code uh, key descriptions. And then you want to use codes that in your research you determine that the federal buyers use. That's why you want to use maybe some of the PSC key description codes. Okay, so that's number five. Number six, differentiators and bonding. If you have some special things that make you different than your competition, you need to create a section that says differentiators. There are a lot of capability statements that have that on it. And then you put why you're different. And then if you're in an industry where you must have bonding, you need to create a section for that as well. Just a, a key title that says bonding and insurance, because that could be a huge concern for some federal buyers. And then number seven, projects and past performance. A lot of uh, guidance counselors and SBA people, they don't tell you to include your past performance. You should definitely include your past performance. You can even put that on the back of the capability statement if you would like to, uh, because even if it's not federal or government, state, county past performance, your commercial performance being in business does mean something. Don't let people tell you that it doesn't. It means something. So you know, no matter what type of business you're in, list your products and your, your not just your products, but also your, um, your services that you've done for your key commercial clients. If your clients allow you to list their names, list their names. If they do not, then you're going to put them in the form of later on, you know, like if you put your, your projects on the back, then you can put you know, references uh, upon request or something like that. You can put some names of references without maybe putting the title of the company. But you need to demonstrate your past performance. That's a big deal. And I find that um, a lot of small businesses are not getting that counseling. So I pride myself in, in bringing that up to small businesses because it could be huge. Remember, these federal buyers don't have a lot of time. Uh, and uh, you will know what I mean when you get to meet them. So you need to make it easy for them to know that you're qualified. And then your specialties and or your staff. You know, what about your staff is um, making you different? For instance, if you're an architectural engineering company, but you're also a general contractor, that's huge that you have that all under one umbrella. Most people, most companies in those arenas, they don't have 
those together. They're, there's usually separate entities. So, you know, whatever makes you unique and different with your staffing, maybe you have your own um, architectural engineers right there working with the general contractors in your company. That is a, a, a big, huge deal. Then number nine, the company snapshot and the POCs. POCs are points of contact. You need to make sure that you have a clear picture of your website, the points of contact, your telephone information in one space, in one area. Okay, so you have a link to this document and then also how to create it. But I'm going to show you just a couple of examples uh, that I've helped to create myself. Nothing big, nothing special, but very nice and neat, straight to the point. And it's easy for a federal buyer to trust that my company or our client's company has the experience, they know what they're doing, and that they have it all together. So take a look at this example. This is an A&E company, uh, an A&E company that has a great deal of experience. We've just put, as you can see, the company information at the top, that it's woman owned, the DUNS number, the CAGE number, the NAICS codes, because they only have three main codes. The fact that it is an A&E cap capability statement the address of the company and the point of contact. Now remember, you can organize this however you want, but you just want to make it easy to read and keep information flowing and consistent. Okay, so this is all the point of contact information. This is a company snapshot up here at the top. And then here is the summary of the capabilities and when the company was built, when it was started, uh, the expertise. And then here are some core competencies. What makes them different would be, you know, in-house staff in some areas. Sometimes you may have to sub out, but if you don't have to sub out for some of these, uh, some of these core competencies, then that's a plus. So you should note that they're in-house or, you know, you guys are all under one umbrella. If you are at a lead, L-E-E-D, uh, in your profession, then you should say so because that would be a certification you have that makes you even more competent. And then here are the differentiators, just a few right here down below the core competencies uh, and um, what your your uh, identifying that makes you special and different. And in this case, bonding is included uh, and the amount of bonding and what's needed. And then uh, right next to that, across from that, would be the NAICS codes. And for construction and engineering, you're going to have a lot of NAICS codes. So, but it's also helpful to identify the keywords and descriptions of these codes. And then for past performance, you just put all of that. We have the past performance on the back for this type of, um, this type of capability statement. And so all of their past performance is identified on the back of this. So it makes it one page and they can just turn it over. Okay, so that's one example. And another example. And we have actually some project listings on the front with this one. But as you can see, this was another form of capability statement, but this one is for construction. Here is the summary in the middle. Here are the core competencies. Here are the core competencies in engineering, which could also relate to the uh, a and &E portion of the business and it's nice to know that they're connected and why do they have or why would they have two statements because some of the jobs that they bid on would be strictly a and &E. some of the jobs that they bid on would be general construction which would include a and &E. so you know if your company is that way you have two areas but sometimes they can be uh, separate or utilize separately and then sometimes they need to be together then you need to have two different statements but connect them in the way that you need to to make your company look more competent and to bring out the differentiators uh, compared to some of your competitors in your bit in your um, your peers in your area so as you can see, there's a lot of information here for competencies and capabilities and then staffing uh, is a specialty in this case to have A&E right under the same umbrella.
And then to the right, we have the bonding again, but we separated that out because bonding in this case, if bonding is huge and important uh, to small businesses working with federal buyers, then you want to make that a big deal Separate it out so that they know that you have it. And if you have good bonding, that means you're a good solid company because no insurance company and no bonder is going to get you bonding if you're you know, if you're not capable. So that demonstrates experience within itself. And then in this case, we put projects and past performance right in the same area. We spelled out some of the projects and we put the dollar amount of the projects so that the federal buyer could see that this is not a company that just started. They have some really good, healthy projects that are in the works. And this is not all the projects, but this is all commercial. This is all commercial activity because they're just getting started in the business. But once they get more federal work, they will add their federal opportunities in some of the awards that they've won under this listing. And in this case, we have some of the company snapshot down here, but we also have the other general information up here. You know, but the company snapshot is the name of the company, who's the president, the location, uh, the government point of contact, which is the POC, the office information, and your website. And then up above, we separated it this time where we put you know, the snapshot of the, the company profile as an 8A company and um, also their NEICS codes. The primary ones are up here. We could put all of them if we want to, but the CAGE code and then also the DUNS number. So, and if you have two separate companies in SAM and two separate companies doing business with the federal government or you would like to, you need to make sure that you have two capability statements because you have two separate profiles. So, okay, so we're going to give you the actual template to create your own capability statements and so that you can get it done on your own. And with that said, thank you for joining us and I hope you enjoyed this short video and get your capability statement done. See you next time.